Some non-theists argue the concept of omnipotence is logically impossible, that no being could ever really be said to be omnipotent, because such an idea is inherently self-contradictory, and thus, an omnipotent god cannot possibly exist. Very few professional philosophers make this argument, and even some atheistic philosophers have shot it down, because it is based on a simple misunderstanding. First, let's define omnipotence. Omnipotence simply means all-powerful. If a being is all-powerful, they would have power over everything else in existence. No other being, process, object, or combination of anything in existence could ever overpower an omnipotent being. Omnipotence simply means one is all-powerful and could never be defeated by anything else in existence. In other words, everything else in existence combined would still be less powerful than an omnipotent being. If this is all omnipotence means, there is nothing logically contradictory going on. There is nothing incoherent about being all-powerful, and thus, there is no omnipotence paradox. The problem occurs when someone defines omnipotence differently. Instead of it meaning all-powerful, they define it as the ability to do anything, which is an incoherent concept. It is in fact logically impossible to be able to do anything. One cannot make a being that is married and also a bachelor. One cannot be evil and simultaneously morally perfect. One cannot have the ability to create the logically impossible, like a square circle or a married bachelor. These concepts are logically impossible, and no being can bring them into existence. Luckily, this is not what omnipotence has to mean, as we explained in the beginning of this video. It just means being all-powerful over everything else in existence. If we have two definitions of omnipotence, and theists are using the first, and some atheists are using the second, to say an omnipotent being cannot exist, then we have a straw man argument. Everyone should get to define what they mean, not have definitions imposed upon them. Thus, claiming it is logically impossible for an omnipotent being to exist because of the second definition doesn't mean it's logically impossible for an omnipotent being to exist as defined with the first definition. It is the height of irrationality to try and force theists to say omnipotence has to be defined in an incoherent way. But some still try to say the first definition is not true omnipotence because it means a being is limited in certain ways and if a being is limited, they can't be omnipotent. Well, the answer to this is to point out unlimited is not synonymous with omnipotence. Increasing power doesn't necessarily mean removing limits. You remove certain types of limits, like ones caused by weakness, but other types of limits can appear with increased power. For example, let's picture a being that does not become omnipotent, but simply becomes extremely powerful over time. As their power increases, they remove limits caused by weaknesses, but can be limited in their ability to form meaningful relationships with others. As you increase in power, it might be harder to relate to other people who feel weak around you or threatened by you, and thus power might potentially limit one in this area. This also might be why if God does exist and is omnipotent, he doesn't totally reveal himself in an empirical way for the sake of a meaningful relationship. One is also limited in the amount of fear they have as their power increases, and thus, they are limited in what they can be afraid of. These limits and other similar examples don't decrease power. Having more or less fear is independent from the question of how much power you could have. In fact, one could argue some limits are good to have and necessary to increase power. For example, it is a bad thing to be unlimited in the amount of diseases you could contract. How exactly would having the ability to contract a disease make you more powerful? One could have unlimited problems, which would also be a bad thing and potentially decrease power. Being unlimited in abilities is clearly not the same as being omnipotent, as certain limits are good to have and necessary to be all-powerful. And some limits do not affect power at all. Some try to argue that if an omnipotent being was also morally perfect, that would create a logical contradiction. As if you are morally perfect, you cannot lie for immoral gains, and thus, you are limited by something that could be helpful and give you more power. But lying or other immoral actions are just abilities that do not necessarily 
increased power. They can for some, but they would be neutral abilities for a being that already has power over everything in existence. So if a being is already omnipotent, meaning one has power over everything in existence, having the ability to lie would not really help him. Lying is something we occasionally use to get out of a problem or away from people who have power over us. If you never have to worry about this because of your omnipotence, the ability to lie would not increase your power. And being limited in this way does not necessarily decrease power. All this should be pretty clear as even some of the most popular dictionaries define omnipotence as unlimited power, not just as unlimited. Having unlimited power doesn't necessarily entail unlimited abilities, like contracting diseases or unlimited moral behavior. Also, this definition of omnipotence is nothing new. This has been known among philosophers for centuries. St. Augustine said, It is precisely because he is omnipotent that for him some things are impossible. St. Ansem said, God cannot be corrupted, or lie, or cause what is true to be false, as, for example, to cause what has been done not to have been done, or many other such things. So it is not like theists recently changed the definition in a panic when some layman atheist pointed out it is impossible to be able to do anything. We have known omnipotence hasn't meant the ability to do anything for centuries. Speaking of etymological issues, some try to say omnipotence has to mean all abilities because of the Latin words that form it, omni and potens. The word potenus is where a word potency comes from. But the Latin word also just means power, not abilities. If, however, it did not, and did mean abilities, that would just be an etymological fallacy. Words do not necessarily mean the same thing as the etymology they derive from, or the parts that make up the word. For example, the word awful means something like terrible or bad. It doesn't mean one is filled with awe. An automobile is defined as a car, not any self-propelling engine, like a rocket or an airplane. So this error, even if valid, would not negate the first definition we gave for omnipotence. Probably one of the most misplaced and ridiculous objections is to argue all this is meaningless unless we can demonstrate omnipotence is real. This just shows they have forgotten what one is trying to do when we are addressing the challenge of the omnipotence paradox. The omnipotence paradox is presented not to show omnipotence has not been demonstrated, but to argue that rationally speaking, omnipotence contains a logical contradiction. Obviously, responding to this challenge and showing there is no contradiction does not mean omnipotence has been demonstrated empirically. We are simply pointing out there is no logical reason omnipotence could not be possible. And trying to shift the argument to demonstrability shows you don't know what you're talking about. Finally, many argue an omnipotent being should be able to create the logically impossible. If one cannot and is omnipotent, then it shows they are limited by logic. The problem with this objection is it assumes that which is logically impossible would be a part of existence. Logically impossible things are not, which is why they are impossible. In fact, it is technically incoherent to call something that is logically impossible a thing at all. As the philosopher Richard Swinburne said, a logically impossible event is not an event, just as a dead person is not a person. It is something described by a form of words that purport to describe an event, but do not describe anything that it is conceivable to suppose could occur, since the sentence that says that it occurred entails a contradiction. Even the atheist philosopher Nicholas Everett says, To say that something is logically impossible is precisely to exclude it from the realm of the doable. So to say that God cannot do what is logically impossible is not to say that his power is limited in any way. So that which is logically impossible is not something that is doable or something in existence. It is just an incoherent collection of words that pretends to describe an event or thing, but really does not. Thus, logically speaking, there is no ability that could make them happen in reality. This also explains why it is incoherent to ask could an omnipotent being create a stone so heavy that even he could not lift. The question is asking for something logically impossible. One is essentially asking, can an omnipotent being bring something into existence beyond their power and still be omnipotent? Obviously the answer is no, because an omnipotent being, by definition, has power over everything in existence. 
If something existed beyond their power, they would not be omnipotent. Plus, again, omnipotence doesn't mean the ability to do anything. And having this ability would decrease power, as it means one has the ability where they could create something beyond their power, and thus, they would not be omnipotent. Again, omnipotence means power over everything in existence. If something could exist beyond such a being's power, then that being was never omnipotent to begin with. Which is why this objection fails. Now let's say one wanted to redefine logic to not be a description of everything that is or everything that is possible, but a limited boundary that one could escape from. So an omnipotent being should be able to ascend beyond the limits of logic. All that would mean is you cannot use logic to try and debunk the existence of an omnipotent being, because such a being would be beyond these limits. So the omnipotence paradox would also fail for the same reason, since it attempts to use logic to show an omnipotent being would be incoherent, and therefore the skeptic just shoots themselves in the foot when they take this route. So all in all, there is nothing incoherent about the property of omnipotence. Anyone who tries to argue it is logically impossible for a being to be omnipotent has not done their homework or is trying to force an incoherent definition onto the theist while ignoring how omnipotence has actually been defined.